Hey, it's time for Voice Over Body Shop, our special holiday edition. Yes, our fan appreciation night. That's right. You know, it's uh, we're we're getting down towards uh, the end of 2020. Remember how they thought that 2020, getting rid of 2020 was going to be great, and 2021 was not a heck of a lot different. Funny how those jokes kind of went away I know. towards the end of 2021. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, at least we're still here to tell them. Uh, anyway, tonight we're going to do our holiday show, and this is pretty much a guest uh, or a fan hangout, and mm-hmm. uh, we want to hear from you guys. If you're watching the show live, you get the chance to be on here. Email us at the guys. There it is right down there uh, at VOBS.TV and say, I want to be on the show, and we will send you a link, and you can be on the show, and uh, you can say what you want to say as long as it's politically correct. <laughs> or holiday ish. correct or ish, yeah, uh, that sort of thing. And uh, so join us. Let's have some fun. Let's talk about what you've learned here on VOBS in the last couple of years or in the time you've been watching, and we want to hear from you. So get ready. It's time for VoiceOver Body Shop right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars. A Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive. From their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are the guys. Well, hello and happy holidays. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS. Dun, 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 dun. Well, it's cold enough to be a Christmas around here in Southern California. Yeah, this doesn't get you into the spirit in LA. I mean, this is this is about as Christmassy as the weather gets around here. And it's I mean, been up in the high thirties down here. At 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 night. At night, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you go up to Big Bear or something, it's down to like fifteen. Oh yeah, it's it's legit real winter up there in the mountains. <laughs> yeah, really. I haven't been up there. Have not really seen snow. Up close, well, once when I was in Chile a couple of years ago, but you probably haven't been seeking it out after living no, in it for fifty we, years. Yeah, no, I have not been. But <laughs> nostalgically, it would be nice to go up. You know, maybe you know, Chris driving up that road to Big Bear. You, know, Marcy's like, no, this is car sickness. You know, personified. Uh, I, I recommend going up to Mount Baldy. Uh, it's not nearly as long of a drive, and yeah. it's not. Yeah, it's still a commitment, but it's nothing. Nearly as long as, as Big Bear. Um, mm. Just don't go there the day of a storm. <laughs> go like a <laughs> yeah, day or yeah. two. Br- bring your chains. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's Christmas in Southern California, kids. It's uh, you know we're we're used to the palm trees and people doing the you know the rose parade and on New Year's Day and you know but it, we're we're heading back into this this pandemic mode and yes, we are. I you know. I have the feeling that this thing now, listen, I am not an epidemiologist. I am, you know, I, nor have I played one on TV, Mm. Uh, but it would seem that if you're vaccinated, 
Uh, and you have a good immune system. This thing, you know, this Omicron thing, you know, I, I have to look at the Greek alphabet. I have to see what's coming next. But if you, if you saw the film World War Z, and one with Brad Pitt where he's, you know, this virus turns people into zombies and stuff. Yeah. Um, fortunately, this one didn't turn people into zombies. It just, you know, <laughs> it, I, I, I guess. Um, um, it's, look, you know, this, this new variant apparently has mutated so it now can transmit real easily. But it's not going to get you all that sick. It's sort of like the flu because that's yeah. Hopefully that's is. the case. Yeah. You know, I mean, and there's something else going around too. They got it going on in the house, and other people have been getting it, but it's not COVID. You know, I've done mm -hmm. the test, like it's just yeah. one blue line. I'm not pregnant. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. um, if you've done the instant tests, you know what I mean. Um, but anyway, it's our holiday show. We want to hear from you guys. Write to us at theguys at vobs.tv, and we will send you a link so you can literally come on and be on the show with us. Show us your studio. Tell us what you're doing. And uh, you can give your holiday greetings to each and every one of the millions of people watching this show right now, wherever it is that they're watching this show. Or stuff uh, that you've learned on the show, or maybe something you've learned this year somewhere else that you'd love to share with us and the, and the viewers. That would be great, too. Right. And, of course, if you have a question for George and I about your home voiceover studio technology... Now be a great time. Throw it into the chat room, whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube or wherever you're watching us, uh, and let us know. So don't be shy. We want to see you guys. We want to see who it is we're talking to every week on this show, yeah. and uh, that would that would help. So, I mean, we've learned things on this mm -hmm. show. I mean, what what was your what was what was the most important thing you learned in 2021 from from doing our show? Um. I would say, and you know, it might say, it might sound like nothing new, but I would say it would <laughs> definitely be like how important it is to simplify your, your studio setup for yeah. your sanity's sake. Um, avoiding gear that requires complex software mixing consoles, driver console drivers, things that can just surprise you the next day before your session that just don't work anymore because of an update. Uh, or because you just thought, well, I thought it was just an update, but it turns out it was an OS upgrade and you <laughs> broke stuff. Um, you know, there's more and more stuff being shoved down our throats to upgrade to these days, you know, from uh, Mac OS and on Windows. And it, there's enough coming at you all, all the time. So adding more complexity in terms of a learning curve about your software driver versions, consoles you're using, et cetera, et cetera. Um, just to add in one simple feature that a lot of people always seem to want, which is loop back or playback, just doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense. Um, and it's, it's, it's caused a lot of frustration and wasted time. Um, I was doing a podcast record recently and the guest, we waited an hour while we had to troubleshoot to get the guest equipment to work you know, on a podcast. And, you know, that's four people plus the guests waiting while we got everything working. You know, it's, um, so it's, we, nobody wants to waste anybody's time. Nobody likes the stress of it. And so that's, that's been a big takeaway. Just again, simplifying your home studio to the basics and a good condenser mic, good acoustics and a clean audio interface preamp which essentially is almost everything available on the market <laughs> at this point um, is really what you should be using these days. Um, unless you're an engineer. Absolutely. Yeah. Now what I've learned this year is the exact same thing, but it has to do with doing a webcast that you can simplify a whole thing. I was going to go grab the pile of wires that we pulled out of here. Right. When we changed, we changed uh, the, the software that we used to do the show. I mean, we, we had we had three cameras. We have, you know, a, you know, switching software. We had the beast, and yep. uh, with this big PC, the super powered PC that we were like, well, we have to have it because it makes the software work. Right. And there were cables running all the way through here, and now we've gotten it down to simply webcams, and we can do anything we want essentially. I mean, there's a couple of limitations. But in order to do a live show like this as a, as a webcast with cameras, 
is uh, not that hard, you know, and, and, you know, I mean, it's, it's easy enough if you know what you're doing. You know, one of the things that we, you know, we were talking about earlier is everybody wanting to do podcasts. Mm-hmm. Now, I personally, I'm, you know, I've always been saying it's great that everybody can do a podcast. It doesn't mean everybody should do a podcast. At least you should have something to say or at least, you know, some idea of what you want to get out there. Yeah. Um, but our our uh, our director, Sue Merlino, tends to think differently because she is a podcast producer and she wants as many podcasts out there starting of up as course. possible. <laughs> Why wouldn't she? <laughs> exactly. You know, but yeah, I, I, we're, we're wondering if we should start teaching people how to do the, the, the podcast engineering, which is not really as complex as doing voiceover. You know, the hardest part is just finding the right tools. And there's so many good online based tools now for recording multiple people in one conversation. Heck, even Zoom now can record every voice in the call as separate tracks. Right. Right. That's built into Zoom now. So when you're, you know, we're doing a show that we call a podcast because we release it as a podcast format, but it's not produced tra- like a traditional podcast where I feel like a podcast traditionally is like something that is something that's done offline. Like there might be an interview, but someone will intro to the, they'll intro the interview. Tonight I'm going to be talking to XYZ, but the interviewee is recorded earlier or at another time, right? Right. And it's all produced. They bring in music and, you know, all this stuff is assembled and that's what you hear uh, on the show. So that's what I think. Part of it's the, t- the technical side. Part of it's the production stuff or post. And part of it's just the mechanics of how do you get the podcast out to the world. And yeah, if there's enough demand, if you guys uh, are, are looking to enter the world of podcasting yourselves, reach out to us. Let us know so we know it's something we should actually put some energy into. Yeah. Well, it, it being the holiday season, we've got, a, we've got some greetings and we're going to play some of those throughout the show. I think we're, we're going to start with somebody far, far away and a good friend of ours who's been with us for, you know, since you and I were doing East West Audio Body Shop back when I was in Buffalo and you were in Santa Monica and, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and, and our friend Ramesh started joining us and he's, I'm in the Canary Islands. So let's hear from Ramesh. Hello, VOBS. How are you guys? A little greeting from the Canary Islands off the northwest coast of Africa. For those of you who don't know where we are, you must have heard of our erupting volcano, which has decided to stop finally after nearly three months and a lot of devastation. But anyway, that's not in this island. That's just about 200 kilometers that way. Here we are safe. It's nighttime. It's 11, 15 p.m., probably earlier in the United States, definitely earlier in Pacific time. So I'm sending you lots of warm greetings from a sunny Canary Islands, 23 degrees, more or less, centigrade that is, and wishing you guys really well. Lots of love, happiness, and enjoy a wonderful festive season. Bye. Hmm. Well, some, well I'm getting all sorts of texts here. No, wait a second. No, that's this one. <laughs> okay. That's the one thing I miss about having the roadcasters having those buttons right there. I'll have to kind of find another way to do that. <laughs> right, you know. And if things get really dull around here, I just go to. <laughs> oh, it never gets old. Well, maybe it, it, it does. It, but it, I no, like it, it don't. Funny. Not for me, it doesn't. But anyway. <laughs> um, once again, we want to have you guys. If you've got a question, and we can get to a couple of questions right now uh, because. George and I like talking about home voiceover studios and voiceover in general, but we got a, we got a couple of questions here. Why don't we start on some of those? Well, you guys write in and tell us that you want to be on this show. Do not be shy. You're professional voice actors, and, you know, we want to – you can't be shy. Be in the conversation. That's true. I know we mm-hmm. see one person that's getting ready to be on, but let's, let's go to the first question we have here from uh, Jeanette Robinette. She says uh, something about podcasting. See. The Sure MV7 podcast mic. That's the one that sort of looks like a, an SM7B, only it's a USB mic, with its own recording software. I understand that it's best to record in auto mode. However, do you recommend putting the recording through Audacity or like a program to do editing? Of course. You know, if you're, if you're doing live streaming, uh, I guess auto mode is probably a good thing to do. Because yeah, I'd I, I say the, 
Live streaming auto would be better. It's less to think about on the fly. I mean, you know, we have a hard time getting all our levels matched and figuring out all that stuff on this show. And we know what we're doing. So taking one thing off your plate and just let auto, the auto level stuff's gotten much better than it used to be on the old video cameras. So I'd say that's probably a smart way to go. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, I mean, all of, a lot of these USB mics have their own. Actually, it's probably true of, of several different things. Some interfaces mm -hmm. come with their own software, uh, even for Macs. And sometimes you got to, I know the, uh, the Epigee stuff has their, their maestro system, which is like, mm -hmm. what, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it can get a little confusing. This revelator here, the personas has a, it's called their universal control. Right. Something like that. Yeah. Software can be confusing and intimidating. Uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's a lot of you, you just want to be able to hit record and go and, and not worry about all this other stuff. But sometimes the software, uh, will give you a little bit more boost to the uh to the preamp and stuff like that and that's really necessary for voiceover because we're we're always you know talking more conversationally mm -hmm. you know you know we yeah, I, oh, go ahead so i i haven't gotten to play with the sure mv7 enough to understand uh whether that is a good setting to use um but i'd say generally if a mic has an, a proper auto gain setting that can handle that for you that will that just takes one thing off your plate when you're live streaming. But if you're recording yourself for VO, I would not recommend any kind of auto, right. at least an auto leveling thing. I would, if it has an auto gain setting, like the Evo 4 audience, that's not so, that's not such a bad idea. It's okay. But I wouldn't have it continuously changing your levels while you're recording. Right. If your producer gets that file, they're going to go crazy <laughs> having your levels constantly varying. They're not going to like that. You, you want it nice and consistent. Well, we have one guest, so he's queued up here, and one of our one of our wonderful contributors, uh, and that is, and of course, do you know how to pronounce your name right, George? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that I think I do, and I okay. think it's Shauna. <laughs> Where is she? Get back in. You here. guys are fighting over the. <laughs> <Yeah>, okay. <laughs> Happy holidays. What's up, you guys? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Uh, I was making cookies upstairs. And I was yep. like, no, nah, I should come down and say hi. I have questions and stuff. So, oh, okay. Happy Thanks. holidays. I am Happy endlessly holidays. sending people your way uh, and endlessly having people hopefully find you when uh, they need help. Primarily beginners who are just at that place where they need to make the right choices and not invest like a ton of money in things that might work and might not. And, You'd be surprised how often it's too late by the time you know. they get to us. Yeah. I bought all this stuff at <laughs> Banjo I, I, Emporium. Yeah, I know. Um, actually, I have a question about the mic you were just talking about because a ton of people are buying it. Mm -hmm. And like, I have the Shure SMB, the one that needs the cloud lifter. I don't right. use it all the time, but it was in our studios in, in Georgetown. This new one that came out, is it, cutting, is, it, is, it, is it okay if it's put into an interface? I know it can be either USB or interface. As George rapidly yeah. Googles this. <laughs> I never know what to say about this mic. And I haven't really liked what I've heard when people send me stuff. But I was really curious about your opinion on it. Cause... Well, I, I ju just from the, the, the design of this thing, that it's supposed to look like an SM7B. It um, does. It's lighter weight, though. You can't, like, lift weights with it. Like, I don't no, think it, it and you can with an SM7B. Yeah, I right. mean, that, it was just, the SM7B was designed as a broadcast mic, and you'll see them in radio stations. And it's a dynamic mic. It's not a condenser mic. Right. Um, I, don't I heard know. some. Oh, Go I'm ahead. Sorry. I heard oh, no. a shootout of the MB7 against some other really, really inexpensive dynamic mics. Mm -hmm. Like they're, like the Shure makes one called the PG48. Okay. That's a handheld, basic budget handheld vocal mic. It's an SM58, yeah, but the okay. budget Chinese version. That's essentially what the MB7 sounds like. It's not a bad, it's not bad, but, it's but not it, you're really scary. buying a $50 mic okay. wrapped inside the, a package that looks like a you know, four hundred dollar mic. Okay, the M that's the MV Seven X. The MV Seven X, which just came out, right? Right. The MV Seven, the, the original one, is USB and XLR, right? Yeah. And so no, it's the more one versatile. I have is only, and I bought it from a friend. Uh, I think mine's analog only, but I've also had it for five years, so I think it's the SMB. Oh, you're talking about the SM7B. SM7B, yeah. That's yeah, I'm talking big, about the, the heavy one. Yeah. I'm talking about the MV Seven X. Oh, MV, okay. So yeah. they released the MV7X to have an XLR version 
of the MV7. Yeah. For okay. people that don't want to use the USB, they don't want the onboard processing. They just want a basic dynamic mic, and but don't want to buy the SM7B. Okay. The good news is that it is more sensitive. Like okay. as a dynamic mic goes, it's it has a higher output than the SM7. So it's going to be a little bit easier to use on your typical interface. Um, but I, I've heard samples of the MV7 used properly with good mic technique, good, good acoustics, in a quiet room. It sounds quite fine. It's, it works pretty well. My other question is about Source Connect Standard versus Source Connect Pro mm -hmm. and what's being required. Because I've only had to do Source Connect Standard sessions for the last year and a half, two years. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm sort of seeing in some paperwork that I recently had to sign some other stuff where they're, they're kind of stipulating pro. And how much of that could be ADR and promo stuff? It's 100 bucks a month. That's why I ask. It's, you know, it's pricey. And I haven't talked to the folks over at you know, Source Elements yet. But. So, so why do they, I guess the problem here is you don't know why they want pro. Right. So I, I mean, I'm still with standard. And no one has actually said to me, I have to get pro. But it's did they more stipulate? Did they specifically say not standard must be pro or not the free version right. must be pro? It's, it's not the Source Connect now. I, mean, I know about that. We know for sure. It's no. We don't want to use that. It's more when I saw this this latest contract uh, with an agency that I'm going to be with in, in LA. Everything was Source Connect Pro was in the paperwork. It didn't say not standard. See, this is the problem. There's a lot of misnomers about naming of software. All it takes is one intern or whatever to type this stuff out yeah. and who doesn't fully understand the stipulation or the, the, the differences between standard and pro. Yeah. And then what, be, what happens is people keep saying not the free one. Right. And so they go, oh, you mean the pro one? And they go, yeah, that one. And that, that ends up on the contract. Thing. No oh. actor needs the pro version. Just Thank standard. God. No, Thank it's God. because. You know what? Standards, it's, it's fine. That's good. To know. Yeah, yeah. The, the producers use Pro because they can do queue manager system, a queue manager thing where it'll automatically record the session for for you and then upload the session in the background. It does all kinds of interesting stuff. Okay. To host that, you have to be on Pro, but the the talent can all be on standard and use that technology. It's amazing how few people actually make use of the queue manager. It's actually a brilliant thing. It literally is recording the session in the background all, all the time on the talent's computer oh, that's um, cool. and it can be uploaded even weeks later because it's stored in like a buffer so like if something goes wrong they can go to your, the queue manager and say hey will you start your queue manager and then they can just grab the session right off your computer it's all completely transparent oh, that's it's pretty cool. pretty cool stuff oh that's sweet well yeah. it's about about time that Source Connect has come into its own what we've only for since we started doing this show it's like you should have this you need to have this yeah and thank you for the video that you put out, George, that saved, like, I don't know how many lives of, of people pulling their hair out. Oh, the, I, the how to use it thing? Yeah. The only thing that happened to me this year, and I'm sure other people know this, but I didn't. I didn't know that my modem could reset my IP address. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah that was pretty. I, did, I called them, and I had plenty of time for them, for, for, for source elements to get on with me and say, oh, yeah, your, your modem just reset the IP address, and your, your ports are no longer mapped. And they fixed it, and they apparently said that it won't happen again. Because they went in and did the, I just don't follow all the stuff that has to happen in the modem. That's where it absolutely is above and beyond my head. And I know the routers, but routers are all, the problem with routers is they're basically like a computer themselves, like a server, yeah. and they all have their own operating systems. So like, imagine if like every computer you had to sit down and work on had a different OS. Like how maddening that is. That's how these routers mm. are. So there's a yeah. Netgear router OS and there's a... You know, so as a, doing support on them is a pain because you're like, oh, where the heck is the port forwarding? Oh, no, they call it port mapping. And, you know, it's just, it's it's a pain. But do you have to remember, I, th I think that's another confusion about the Source Connect. There's so many. Hashtag Source Connect myths. Um, <laughs> that you don't have to have a static IP address for your, your house, like your WAN, your wide open network. You don't have to have a static IP there. But you do need to have a fixed IP address on the, the computer that you're using it with yeah. so that it can't change the IP address on you. And there's ways to do that. Um, it's just knowing that you have to do it in the first place. That's the I tricky part. I was glad that I logged in two days before and went, what do you mean my ports are no longer mapped? And immediately yeah. got on with them like, oh yeah, we can fix that. It was yeah. easy to fix, but. Yeah, and they do well. that, it's great. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for that video. Yeah. 
Thank welcome. you for being with us. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for being a perennial supporter of our show. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks, Sean. It's great to see you. And that's a lovely studio you have there. You know, it's a lot of foam. It's a lot of foam <laughs> from 10 years ago. I would do panels now, but you know what? It works. And it's, if, it, mm-hmm. if, it were, if it ain't broke, don't fix my, it. My next door neighbor was doing his siding this year when I had sessions. So, um, and I'm underneath my stairs. I'm like a Harry Potter type. Yeah. <laughs> Tiny. You don't want to be a big person in here, but. Uh, mm-hmm. Are you anyway, seated or standing? I am currently sitting, but I can do both because I've yeah. got like my four sixteens up here and I stand right. up and then I've got a stool, like a drum stool that I can kick up and down. Excellent. But is that like, the 4047 mic in front of you? Which I have a T102. Now I'm actually on it. A T102. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then my 416, I have to like a little kid show off. My 416 is way up here. I cur- I was, it's shoved out of the way right now. It's not pointed mm-hmm. at anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I have the ability, my husband put in a granite countertop, a romantic, uh, no yeah. I don't, yeah, no reflection found, off of that. Well, I've got it covered, which is the irony, okay. right? You know, yeah. but I mean, it's, it's beautiful. I don't have granite countertops upstairs, but I do. <laughs> yeah, in your studio. And then, well, you also, I remember from your studio, your, the teaching lab that you yeah. work in, they, you guys had some cool mounts for your Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that all started, it all started in here. I mean, that's what this thing is. So it's like my feet are completely clear as I, sorry, as my did all kinds of crazy things. Mm-hmm. Um, my feet are clear uh, and everything is mounted to pipe that you saw from yes. like Home Depot. Yeah. And so the only problem right now is I've got my Manfrotto arm and my other arm attached to my coffee tray. So, you know, that's a problem. Right. <laughs> so right. Every time I sat down my coffee and then my new favorite thing. I think it was Jordan Reynolds posted on Facebook. Mm. What is the thing that's driving you crazy right now? And I was like, oh, that'd be my coffee. Because I keep putting my coffee down directly below my Neumann. And so uh. my voice goes into the coffee mug, swirls around a couple times, and comes back out. <laughs> just, just, just a little bit like that. In, yeah. into the mic. <laughs> well, probably like, like D. Bradley Baker, because he does that stuff like on purpose. You know? Right, yeah. So I wasn't actually trying to do that. I was like, what the hell? It took me like 15 minutes. Yeah, it sort of, sort of sounds like that after a while. Oh, but add a little yeah. ring to it because it's a pottery yeah, mug, right? right? Yeah. How about it? All right. Shana, I thanks for- I up and make, make cookies, so. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for being with us. Hey, happy holidays. And it's Shauna, right? Shauna, Shauna, Shana, Shauna. <laughs> it's Shauna. There should be a U in yes. there then. There should be a U or a W. Right or a W. All of my exactly. friends who live on the East Coast call me Shauna. So, yeah. you know, they just make it easier Shauna. to Shauna, yeah. Okay. All right, Shauna. Merry right. Christmas. <laughs> Happy New Year. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Back Bye. to your cookies. All righty. Hey, it's time to... Now, our next guest is somebody who, who's been with us for a while. He runs our, you know, our chat rooms and stuff. And he's, he's got something he wants to talk about because he's in a big release movie with some big stars. And we want to ask him about it. Let's welcome Jeff Holman to the show. That's Hollywood Jeff, Jeff Holman to you. Hey. Yeah. hey, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? We're good. We're good. So you, tell us about what you've been up to. Well, I can finally uh, celebrate uh, my blessing that I was involved in a project earlier this year uh, called Being the Ricardos, the new Era Sorkin it? movie. Oh, so awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What's your role? What, yeah. Oh, I play uh, Roger Otter, uh, who is the... Philip Morris executive in charge of the uh, I Love Lucy show. I mm-hmm. basically tell them what they can and can't do with their show, and they tell me where to go with that. <laughs> that must be a lot. W- w- how many uh, days were you on set? Uh, actually, I was on set probably um, maybe a total of three weeks, although the shoot went like two and a half months. Right, three weeks is quite a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was a good, it was a good, uh, it was good pay, good payday. Was there a lot of sets? Was it a lot of location, or was it on back? What, what, how did where did where are they shooting? Actually, they were shooting at Sunset Gower Studios in Los Angeles. A lot of it, and then some of it was at the Buell Theater on Wilshire. A lot of the uh, office scenes and the backstage scenes were there, and uh, some of it was also shot on the Queen Mary. Oh, far out. Did you get to do any location or like outdoor scenes where there was like, you know, vintage cars and all that kind of stuff? Was that going on? 
No, no, mm-hmm. I never got to do any vintage car shots. I wish, I wish, yeah, yeah. I love that stuff. That's what I love about period films is seeing the cars, you know, and you're realizing somebody's oh, yeah. got, they got all these cars, they bring them in, either the studio owns some or they rent them, and yeah. sometimes a bus goes by, and you're like, oh my God, that's a vintage, you know, these cars are all 50 plus years old. It's really cool. Yeah, to see that. amazing. Or, yeah, all the, and all the, all the, um, wardrobe was all period and all the mm-hmm. rings and watches we were wearing and everything all that was it was really cool yeah quite Nobody a cast in this eye. thing too what was that Sorry, quite I a cast yeah oh yeah. my god right yeah uh nicole and javier were so nice too super ge- generous genuine people mm-hmm. not jerks at all not uh didn't have their noses in the air they were just like super down to earth and cool yeah it was great that's so nice I'm lo- yeah that's and the uh, and all, all everyone like every single person that i worked with was just really really cool that's great i'm that's such a cool experience for you man hey, you know we've all, I've always been got a kick out of your email address hollywood jeff holman and like dude you're like living it <laughs> yeah finally right yeah after uh a overnight success after 25 years in the business I, that's how it works it's a lot of work it takes a lot of stick to itiveness people all the time you know we hear all the time like well i've been auditioning for a year and i haven't booked anything <laughs> on that. i'm like hey you know <laughs> keep going those people right. you see on tv or in commercials or on on a big commercial campaign that that it's extremely rare that they get those quickly. That's that's ten plus years of work you didn't know they were doing. Yeah, you know. definitely, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All righty. All right. So I'm also on uh, something really cool called Yellow Jackets, which is on oh. Showtime. Uh, so I'm a recurring character on that. I play this character called Randy Walsh, and uh, I don't know if you've seen that show, but it's pretty intense. No, I haven't. Mm-hmm. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, it's about uh, a uh, girl soccer team who gets marooned in the Canadian wilderness. Ooh. So it's sort of like Lord of the Flies in the Canadian wilderness with women. Exactly. That <laughs> sums it up perfectly. <laughs> yeah, have you seen it? I think you've seen it. I've not seen it yet. I've seen Lord <laughs> of the Flies. I mean, I did go to middle school, but I've seen Lost. Sure. <laughs> and then there was Lost. Exactly. You know what? That's funny you mentioned that. My manager thinks it's a lot like Lost too, because it does a lot of flashbacks uh you mm-hmm. know getting to know the characters through flashbacks so mm-hmm. yeah it's yeah. very cool well, and then think, early 22 yeah, 22, yeah. i'm gonna be in minx as well which is an hbo max project see that and this is this is how it works in hollywood you get yourself into one big thing with all the good people and then suddenly you're on everybody's good list boom and your your career is happening that's that's great to hear thank you thanks you guys i really appreciate it well, Thanks for helping us out too. Yeah, absolutely. Being so loyal and being here whenever you can when you're not shooting and helping us out in the chat and keeping our questions flowing. We really appreciate it, man. Happy holidays. Yeah, th- th- thank you. Yeah, one time I did it uh, from Vancouver when I was when I was filming Yellow Jackets out there, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love it. I love being a part of the show and I always learn so much. You guys are really great teachers. Yeah. What have you Thanks, learned Jeff. specifically from us? Something that, you know, made made a difference for you? Uh, specifically mic placement. I mean, mm. seriously, it's so basic, but having that, you know, the hang loose versus the thumbs up versus the, the fist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's key. Um, being able to, you know, properly point my four sixteen So it's coming sort of down, you know, toward my mouth, but not actually at my mouth. Yeah. Mic placement, huge, huge. Yeah. Cause it's like, it's like a selfie, but before we had selfie cameras. It's like yeah. holding a camera and trying to get a nice shot, but without being able to preview yourself. <laughs> what a great That's analogy. That's kind of like aiming a mic is kind of like that. You, yeah. you, even if you have headphones on, if you don't know what to listen for, it can be difficult to, to get on target with a microphone. It's a lot easier with a selfie camera, obviously. Yeah, um, unless, unless your arm is really short, like mine, and try, <laughs> trying to get the whole thing. Come on, we can get all get in this. <laughs> Make your arm longer. Come on, Dan, just stretch it. Well, I think I can stretch it out. Uh, oh, it didn't work. Oh. Yeah. Uh, well, Jeff, we we can't thank you enough for all you've been doing for us and and getting all you know the the chat rooms in order and getting everybody's questions on and uh, happy to help. 
All righty. Well, Merry Christmas to you and Happy New Year. And uh, Happy we'll holidays s- to you guys. We'll see you in 2022. Sounds good. All right. Love you. We love you, too. All right, we're going to take a quick break right now, and we'll be back. Come on, guys, join us. You you can be on just like Jeff was or, or Shauna or anybody else, and you can talk to us, ask your questions, give us your, your holiday uh, wishes, and we'll be right back after these important messages. Don't go away. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. Let's face it. If you're a voice talent, not everyone in your family or close friends really understands what you need for your home voiceover studio. You want a what? Well, VoiceOverEssentials.com has the perfect answer when it comes to birthdays and other gift-giving for us voiceover folk. New for the first time ever, after countless requests, VoiceOverEssentials.com is thrilled to offer the VoiceOver Essentials gift card. You pick the amount you want to give, and they take care of the rest. The recipient will receive an email with their digital gift card and gift code to use on anything they offer on voiceoveressentials.com. Give them or give yourself the gift of getting exactly what you want, like the Harlan Hogan VO1A microphone, the Portabooth Pro or Plus, Harlan Hogan Signature Series VoiceOver Optimized Headphones. You want them? What? Go to voiceoveressentials.com and click on Shop and Gift Cards and choose the amount. Gift cards now at voiceoveressentials.com. Thanks, Helen. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values. A leader for California and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. Oh, it's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. You know, one of the joys that I've had this past year, and for many years, is to be able to use my voiceover skills to narrate audiobooks. It's just been awesome. And if you've ever heard that audiobooks are too much work and not enough money, it's likely because the person that told you that hasn't had a very successful approach to doing audiobooks or they got bad information or not such great training. Well, I'd like to change that for you. The ACX Masterclass new spring 2022 class is going to be starting at the end of March, and we put together a four-month payment plan that goes really easy on your cash flow. You make one payment every four months, and then at the end of March, we're ready to go. You jump into class, and off to the races we go. I'd love to have you with us. Dan O'Day and I teach the ACX Masterclass brand new four payment plan. Use the link you see on the screen, and we'll see you in March. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. All righty, we're back, and you know we got a bunch of people in the queue that want to talk to us. Keep it brief. You know, I was telling people, you want to do a holiday greeting, keep it to sixty seconds. You know, and let's let's make it move on so other people can get on. So let's go to uh, our next guest who's joining us, who's with us apparently every week. Uh, Jay Horace Black, Jay, join us, please. There you are. Hey, 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 what's going on? Hey, just want to say appreciate you guys. Uh, George, your your thing on the Zoom uh, updates and uh, something about I remember there was a time when the U, the UA Apollo wouldn't work well with Zoom. You made it sound <laughs> boxy. <laughs> yeah, that, that that was huge. And then I want to throw out a shout to Dan because when I was in town back before COVID, and I had a screw fall out of my four sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> screw fell out of your four six you know, from the, there's a, from the there's back a, of it when there's a plug oh, in. Okay. Back of it, yeah. and uh you what'd you, you do you went in your tool case and you, you look for a screw and you said no i i don't have one but you called somebody in la and he stayed open late for me to get there because you know traffic is terrible and and gave me the screw for free and um how cool well, is that guys for that and the constant knowledge you guys give me 
gives me more confidence going into sessions when I have them. Yeah. That's no, really we, cool, man. We we really appreciate it. And we appreciate that you're you're here almost every week. We see you there. I know. We always have a question. Loyal fans that have questions to keep the show going, man. You guys are the you guys are the coal in the engine. Appreciate it very much. Oh yeah. Yeah. Voiceover does not run on coal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know why I came up with coal. I'm thinking of back home, Pennsylvania, yeah. the coal yeah. cracking region. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. You of. are the nuclear fuel that keeps it going. How's that a little <laughs> bit fuel more rod. contemporary? Fuel rod, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jay, great to see you, man. And uh you know, we're all gonna get together soon. It's, this thing can't last forever, but you know. You're well, in the Chicago know. area, right, Jay? I'm in Indianapolis, but I work as a Chicago yeah. local. Local. Oh, okay, gotcha. Oh, right okay, on. cool. Indianapolis. I also be on labs a lot in LA, and mm. I constantly I'm like, because the questions a lot of people have about their mics, and uh, I even took the clip you sent in YouTube with the mic placement, mm -hmm. mic technique, and I both posted it on the chat room because a oh, lot of people didn't know, you know, um, and the boxy sounds they're having. So you need to call George and Dan. So thank I'll, you. Well, we appreciate that. And send appreciate everybody you know our way. Cheers. Cheers. All righty. Thanks, all right. Jay. Happy holidays, bro. Yeah, all right. We got another question here from uh, Sandra Manwiller, uh, who's watching us on YouTube. She says, happy holidays, guys. After much hemming and hawing, I've purchased my first MacBook Air M1. You mean like this one? <laughs> George, I got one around George, here somewhere. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I got mine a uh, couple days ago, and uh, are you, you know, happy with it so far? Yeah, you know, we'll have to find out if she's happy. So, and you just got to say, I'm nervous, but you gave me the courage to take the plunge. Thanks to you both. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thank you, Sandra. Yeah, you know, I've got mine. You know, it's you know, loading it up was no problem. You know, you just go into uh, you know the migration assistant, and suddenly, like your old computer is on your new computer, and it, it was pretty simple. Of course, you got to remember some passwords and stuff like that. Yep. But uh, got to know your Apple ID password, and you know it. it now, like, it used to be, turn on a new Mac and a few clicks, and you're up and running. Now it asks you like fifteen or twenty questions <laughs> when you're just trying to get it started up for the first time. But uh, you know, so it's a pro, it's it's it can be a little annoying. <laughs> it's like okay, now do you want to, what, what do you want to know now? Will you let me use my computer, please? <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, I, yeah the, the the performance is. Uh, I think it's worth it. The performance you get is uh, silent, cool operating battery lasts all day. Is it's worth the little inconveniences? I think. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, it it is a lot faster. It's a lot lighter. Uh, yeah, it's know, pretty I, light. Yeah, I don't have to keep remembering my password because it's got the uh, the, the the thumb the, the thing thumb on it. Like, Remember when phones had those? How handy that was. Now they oh. have an annoying face ID. Oh, yeah. <laughs> face ID. The face ID yeah. went, with the pandemic, the face ID just went sucked. Un, it's like you're standing in line at the supermarket. Let's see what's going on. Shoot, I got to remember my freaking password. password. <laughs> you beep it, then you put in the password, and then you you beep it again. You got to go. It's just like, come on. Yeah. It was Technology. Uh, kind no, of I, love, I love it. I love the fingerprint reader for sure. All right. We've got another guest. Come on, you, this is great, people. You want to? We want you to get on here and and, and talk with us. We want to see. What, see, we do this show, and we can't see everybody out there. We we know you're there, but we you know we want to hear from you guys and uh, get the chance to be on our show. Our next guest is Jonathan Grant. Jonathan, welcome. Hey guys, how are you? Good. Hey, sound did, great. When in doubt, reboot. Did it work? Yeah, I did. I, I had to close <laughs> Chrome. I don't know what's going on. The technology. <laughs> well, Chrome is like, you know, people forget, but Chrome is like an operating system of its own. Right. It's like an operating system that runs on your operating system. Right. And it's a, it's a heavy beast of a, of a program. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, I that's, think it, I zig instead of zagging. So, mm. <laughs> kind of threw me off a little bit. Well, you're here. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. So, I'm six months in uh, to voiceover. Oh, wow. Um, I've been an Welcome. entrepreneur for 22 years. Uh, web development, that's design, uh, everything for myself. And I've dreamt about this my whole life. And, you know, I'm the guy that would be driving down the car, imitating the guy doing the imaging on the radio, <laughs> yeah. you know, just constantly yeah. <laughs> and, and just love it. Uh, and so far having a lot of fun. And I don't have a lot of experience that I can offer, but I can give some insight on the newbie perspective. Please. Sure. I um, love that. Your, so in the six months, um, so I did take a misstep. 
And I ended up talking to um, Mark Cashman about it. Mm -hmm. This misstep that I took, I'm like, how would I know if I'm running into nonsense? And he says, when it starts sounding like BS. <laughs> <laughs> That's not exactly how he said it. Yeah, no, <laughs> no Mark, would, Mark wouldn't say it that way. Yeah, right? he, I was being kind. But um, so that was something that I quickly was able to remedy. And uh, I do have a coach that I'm working with. And I'm really excited about that. We're, we're now kind of refining scripts and getting down to uh, recording a, um, a pro demo. My booth is set up, as you can see, um, I actually built this myself. It's a room within a room, um, quick specs. I'm using mineral wool uh, mm -hmm. for the walls. Um, I built, I, the two existing walls were already insulated. So mm -hmm. then I, I built, it's got a neo wall, so it's not square. So I have a 45 degree angle here for the door. Um, the red that you see are panels that are filled with four inches of uh, the Owens Corning 703. Mm -hmm. um, no real bass traps in here. Um, in fact, I was getting ready to send you guys a file to check my audio. I do have a cloud, a four inch cloud, four, uh, two by four. The rest is mm -hmm. all Oralex. I've got a uh, Sennheiser 416 and then also a Neumann TLM 103. That's um, a good starter, Mike. Yeah, yeah I mean, so, yeah. Let's, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I, start, <laughs> I actually started out, I had an AKG uh, C214. Mm -hmm. And it sounded a little tinny, and uh, feedback that I got, it sounded a little tinny. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, the TLM, what I have found is, because I already have kind of a lower register, is that it's, that mic's kind of already getting rid of some of the mud, and it's bringing up the mids and the highs a little bit for me. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I get the proximity effect on the 416, you know, I'll, I'll shake somebody's uh, desk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Are so, you working seated most of the time, or standing and seated, or both? Or so both? I'm seated now but I'll stand, I've got a, a stand-up desk. I just push a button here. Mm -hmm. I stand when I record. Otherwise, I don't know, I feel lazy. Have you noticed the difference in the sound when you're standing versus sitting? Yeah, I think as when you're erect, you know, it elongates the diaphragm, I think. Mm -hmm. So How about the sound acoustically? Have you noticed the way the mic sounds different when you're standing versus sitting? No, If you not say no, really. then that might be because you did a really good job of yeah. tuning the ceiling yeah. cloud well Is i did have i had some slap coming off of the monitor in front of me so i, I actually put that on a pole now and it's tilted back because mm -hmm. <laughs> the first point of reflection was coming straight back in my face so i'm trying to send it around the room um not an expert but everything i've learned listening to you guys <laughs> you know i'm trying well, to, I mean, to implement it in here even it's, here it's, over stream yard it sounds pretty clean and sounds, it's sounds crisp so and yeah my my noise floor in here focused is about on well on the on the 416 it's a uh, minus 67. Mm -hmm. get better and than the that. tlm really it's good. A crowding 60 57. Because mm -hmm. you're picking up more rumble that mic has a lower end picks up low end like nobody's okay. business it's like a yeah. seismograph yeah so <laughs> yeah what i'm finding is that uh, it's hard mm -hmm. <laughs> it's real hard <laughs> you, know, you look at it um, uh, as an outsider and you're like oh I can read that. Let me just read this. You know, this yeah. is easy. Yeah, we can all read, right? We've Holy been reading for cow. 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot more to it than that mm, yeah. and the nuance. So I had some questions. I know you want to move to other guests and that, and I just wanted to quick shoot a couple if I could. Please. Okay. There you go. So I'm hearing a lot of love hate about the uh, DBX 286S. Hate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Generally, for, for for podcast or webcast, it's a pretty nice tool. Yeah, for, for, for VO, it's, it's not. Right. It's designed for live broadcast, not, yeah, for, that's, not for recording voiceover. So I have one in here because mm -hmm. I, I just, I took care of, I built another wall out in the next room to take care of some ambient kind of noise that was coming into the next room. And I was using the DBX for just the expander, you know, to keep some yeah. of that noise down. Yeah. I haven't had to turn it on since. So... Oh, good for you. Well, I'll there you go. Get, You're doing I'll the right thing. Probably get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I find it's an okay tool. I mean, if you have nothing better, and it it it's a good enough thing for webcast and radio and streaming. And well, it, but it, for video, yeah, it's hmm. what I had learned from you guys is you know if you're pre-processing, you're stuck. You get mm -hmm. what you get. Yeah. Right? You know if you run it through that and you can't come back and fix. Exactly. And I think you get used to the way it sounds. I get samples from people. I say, give me raw audio. I hear it, and then I can hear the expander because it's you know not quite set it. right, yeah. or it's it's set too aggressively, and it's you hear some like weird. Or on Star Trek, 
Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. And it's exactly. just like, yeah, you know, I know you're trying to hide it, but you're not hiding it from engineers. They're going to hear it. They, right. They, they know what to listen for. <laughs> right. So. Exactly. So don't try to fool us. So what equipment, if you were to recommend something for pre-processing, what would you recommend? Your voice. Just the voice. Just well, practice. pre-processing meaning... And- you went pre-processing. Well, let me ask you this. Why do you want pre-processing? Good oh, I, don't, I don't even know that I do. That's why I'm oh. here. Then don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. You really don't. Just record raw wave files, normalize, edit, and and just process in post. It's okay. It's so much easier to repeat the same settings correctly, especially with normalizing, setting the levels, helping you calibrate your levels. Not set your level, but calibrate right. your level. It's so much easier. If you Without do it on that, the way yeah. in, you have to set your gain really you got to get you got to nail the gain really accurately when you record through processing because if it's off the compression does weird stuff the whatever's going on there is not going to sound consistent that's yeah. and that's harder to engineer that way so, right and right. you you want to sound as natural as possible you know that's why why you know we're always talking about mic technique and the fact that the mic should really be at about the height of your ears or at about you know upside down right. have it at, at nose level because that way, that's how other people hear you and perceive you. And, and that's why we say do it that particular way. Right. Uh, you know, other people are, you know, we, we, get, we still get a lot of people talking to the wrong side of the mic. Right. And talking into the top of the mic, you know. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, if you, if you use it right and you talk naturally, uh, it, your voice itself should carry. It's not, it's not the technology that gets you work. It, right. it really is your ability to interpret copy. Right. My, my coach is always talking about it's the magician, not the wand. So <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Ex- yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks John, for joining us. Yeah. Hey, thanks, thanks, for joining thanks guys. Us. Love the, love the show. Thanks. Right. Much. Thanks keep, for listening. Keep, yeah. Thanks for listening yep. and thanks for watching and thanks for joining us. All right. Talk soon. Alrighty. Oh, okay. Well, Sounds right good. now. Yeah. Well, we have, we have a greeting from somebody who's been with us since before we started this show. <laughs> Joining us, uh, he's got a greeting from New York City. Well, from Connecticut, actually. Uh, Unless he's in Florida. I never know where John is. Anyway, John (laughs) Florian. Let's hear from him. Hi, everybody. Happy holidays from VoiceOver Extra. And special hats off to Dan and George. And happy holidays to you guys. You know, without you guys being in this industry for so long... We'd still be fumbling with microphones and interface settings and all kinds of stuff. And who knows where we'd be in our career. Thank you very much for all you've done for us. Thank you, everybody, for your support at VoiceOver Extra. Happy holidays and Happy New Year. That's a class act, John, right there. Yeah, you know. Read read VoiceOver Extra. I mean, there's stuff in there. I mean, George and I have webinars that are still sitting in there that you can purchase. Yeah, Uh, some of it's everything. It's, we cover a lot of topics on there and yeah, there's a, a huge, huge content on there. You can search and find a lot of, lot of stuff on there. It's useful. And yeah. Helpful. Not, not just our stuff, but mm-hmm. you know, lots of articles and, uh, you know, probably the, the, the best online magazine for voiceover cause it's got everything in there and it's anything that was in there is still there. So you could, yeah, yeah it's like a journal, can, you know, it's all absolutely. there. You know, and he's been, he's been sponsoring our show all this time and we really appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. We have another question here from Red Cabin Acoustic. Red Cabin Acoustic. I wonder if they live in a red in a red cabin. I don't know. Uh, she. Uh, they say he, she, it, whatever. Uh, I've heard that if it's not broke, don't fix it. But there always seems to be an emphasis on new plugins, new computers. How important do you think it is to be on the cutting edge with tech? It doesn't look like you know, a Harlan Hogan VO1A, VO1A. Uh, you know, we were just saying, you, it's not the technology. Now, there's a lot of guys who push plugins. I know, George, you, you, you've got your, your stacks that you do for people for Untwisted Wave and, and Audacity and, and, and uh, Adobe Audition and the other ones. But when it comes to these plugins, what are all these plugins for? They're not for voiceover. You know, I, all of this stuff, every last bit of it, I say this every week, was designed for making music. So that David Bowie, rest his soul, was, you know, could manipulate things and, and all the great music that we hear today is manipulated by this. But if you listen to voiceover on the radio or on commercials, and certainly in just general narration, 
you're not hearing any flanging or you know uh, 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 that sort of thing i mean Vocal people doubling are, and <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> or chorusing yeah uh I mean, most of the stuff is is not designed for voiceover and there are people who are saying gotta use this it's cheating as far as i'm concerned you know because for me it's acoustics mic technique and setting levels properly and if you've got those three things down, you don't need all of those other things. Well, he says, or he, they say, there always seems to be an emphasis on new plugins and new computers. Well, it's because there's a business that makes those things and they have to sell them. <laughs> That's right. So, well, you know, when there's emphasis on it, it's because you're watching, reading, and listening to all the marketing that's going on around that stuff. And, and now with YouTube, there's a tremendous number of YouTubers who... That's literally where they get their content. Their content is from companies reaching out to them, sending them licenses, actual equipment to review. So there's a never ending fire hose of new product that's being shoved down your throat is as a YouTuber, as you are, you're watching YouTube. Um, you know, so yeah, it's going to feel that way. It really is. And it can, maybe that's why I've never pursued voiceover because I'm so hung up on the tech and the gear that that's a distraction. I, I don't know if I could ever focus uh, long enough on acting to be a successful voice actor. It's just because the tech side of it is so enticing all the time. Um, yeah, but if you're a nerd, if you're one of those people that likes to play with this stuff, mm -hmm. that's fabulous. But it's got nothing to do with interpreting copy. And, yeah. and I think people need to separate themselves from that until you actually understand what this stuff does. And unless you're producing finished audio you know, with music, with effects, the stuff that all these producers do, you really have no business playing with that stuff. I mean, a lot of people will use it to clean it up. And you and I have talked about this. There certainly are people that have to do stuff live and they've got to be able to have the front end be quiet mm -hmm. uh, for doing, you know, source connect sessions or any remote sessions. Or what we're like doing. <laughs> or, or what we're doing. Or but we're not cleaning this up. Our audio is perfect anyway. Shh. We won't say anything. It's live broadcast, so we can play with this stuff. And George spends his time just thinking about how, how we can play more with it. I know. I'm never happy. I'm never satisfied. Just ask my <laughs> girlfriend. Um, and, th and the second question, I think he was actually referring to, or they were referring to, the mic you're using tonight, noticing it's not the usual VO1A. Oh, I was too lazy to go plug it in. <laughs> you know, this, this, this Which is, one is this, that? This, this is my custom built um, from mikeparts.com. Somebody who should be sponsoring us as well. If you're out there, <laughs> you, you know who you are. Um, this is a, uh, well, it used to be an MXL 2001. It was the first mic I bought back in 2001. Um, it became a donor body. They had new electronics for it and a K47 uh, capsule. And, uh, you know, and you, they give you great instructions on how to solder it all in and do it perfectly. They're handpicked parts and, you know, you solder it all together and I plugged it in and, and I'm like, holy crap, it works. You know, did it all it, work perfectly the first time or did it, you have to do some tweaks? No, it, it worked just fine. That's awesome. And, uh, and it also ha it has an Omni switch in it. You got to take it apart and there's a switch. It's that hard. will change the mode to to so Omni. So it's a two capsule mic, or is it a one it's a, capsule? It's a double sided mic. Oh, okay. You know, wow. it's got it. You know, the K forty seven is like that, and uh, but it doesn't you know, have a figure eight mode. It does not have Just a figure cardioid and Omni. Yeah, and Omni, yeah. You know, so but as you can hear, it sounds pretty good. I've been using clean. it. Yeah, of course it's clean. Uh, oh, I remember nice. there was a problem because I I had it plugged into a, a my uh, Personas Eureka, which some people have. And for some reason, it just didn't work with that. So I sent it back to them because they're like, well, now I have to get a Eureka to test it to see why it's, why it's doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he would never was able to figure it out. So, yeah. uh, but I have it here on my desk, you know, for teaching. And, you know, when I'm like too lazy to go in the booth, I mean, I could give you a tour in here, but, you know, it's not too messy. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, well, I can sit here because the acoustics in here are just as good. Yeah, we've got a lot of work into that room to make it sound good. Exactly. And so I can use it at the desk, but it also works great for, you know, when we're doing our live it broadcast sounds great. as well. Yeah, it sounds excellent. Yeah. Are, you, are you running it right into uh, the roadcaster? Just Is into that... the roadcaster yeah. and, you know, a little bit of broadcast compression, but, you know, mm -hmm. nothing, nothing, nothing too, uh, too drastic. Yeah. And, you know, it sounds the way it sounds, you know, this is what I sound like, you know, mm -hmm. when I'm this close to somebody. Exactly. Anyway. Yeah. You're in broadcast mode. 
yeah. as I tend to be. I yeah. always like find myself like right here. I just can't. I can't help it. It's that's part right. of it's from wearing headphones too. Yeah, you're that's getting true. that feedback loop. Right, and I and I don't wear headphones normally. I mean, when I'm recording, right. it's I I'm you know I'm naked. Yeah, we're, we're in broadcaster up. mode right now. Exactly. <laughs> well, we have a greeting from one of our good friends and a guy who's been sponsoring us for a good long time. Uh, J. Michael Collins uh, sent in a, a greeting, so why don't we hear from him? Hi, everybody. It's J. Michael coming to you live from uh, Midtown Manhattan, where we just had uh, a great time at the Voice Arts Awards last night. I want to wish all of the VO Body Shop audience a wonderful happy holidays. Merry Christmas, whatever you guys celebrate. Have a great holiday season. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of each other. Have a good time from myself, from the entire JMC Demos team. Uh, and a big thank you and shout out, as always, to Dan and George for letting us be a part of the show. Have a great holiday, everybody. Thanks, J. Michael. You There's know, the man. Class act. I think he was Sir, just in New York with a bunch of other, other folks at that Sovas show, right? Yeah. That's what yeah. I saw online. I'm, I'm sure he won an award or two. <laughs> I'm sure they, three, they took some home. Four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. We've got a question here. You want to get this one? Number six from Jake Thomas Garner, who's listening, watching on YouTube. Sure. We must have a lot of SAG actors tonight. They all have three names. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it separates them from everybody else who exactly. has the same name. Another Jake Garner. Um, like our friend, uh, uh, David Ainge Lawrence, the 17th. 17th. You know why his last name, you know why he's a 17th? Cause he's, he's the 17th David Ainge Lawrence and the SAG roster or whatever. <laughs> That's why. Um, anyway, sorry. Uh, <laughs> what's your view on wait times for microphones? Um, I can't get my hands on a Sennheiser MKH 41.6 or similar for a long time. There's a nine week back order in Australia. Ah, Australia. I hear there is a silicon shortage or something. There's shortages of labor, there's shortages of raw materials, there's shortages of chips. Uh, yeah, th th that, is, that is the latest thing I've heard recently is there's a shortage of the actual material that chips are made from, the actual silicon wafer that everything is printed onto is there's a shortage in that. So, I mean, talk about something that's in everything electronic. So, um, honestly, depending on where you are, I would find it hard to believe that you couldn't find one that's in relatively good condition used. Um, but, uh, that always comes with a price of, of not knowing, you know, at what kind of condition it's in until you get it. If you don't have somebody that you can trust that can test it with you, or if you have another mic to compare it to, um, if you buy something you're not sure about, you could always send a sound check or a, a specimen collection cup sample to us, and we'll tell you if it sounds the way it's supposed to sound, because we've heard that mic a thousand times. We know what it should sound like, and we'll let you know if the mic you end up with is not on target. Yeah, yeah. Now, I've never heard a four sixteen sound muffled or anything like that. It's, only after it, many years of use, like just getting dirty and right like, scummy, yeah, um, smoking before they, you know, yeah, which nobody does anymore. But you are in Australia. I mean, if you can't get Rode mics, something's really wrong. So yeah, really look into Rode NTG five, which is what I have right here. That's a that's a very good alternative to a forty one six. We love saying forty. I, that's a that's a. That's a thing we can do on my other show. Uh, the 416, um, the NTG5 is pretty close, pretty close. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for some alternatives, um, but wait times are what they, they are, what they are. And uh, you got to be resourceful these days. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, it's like anything else. Everything's getting expensive because the supply chain has been, you know, knocked off. Of course, we've solved the problem here at the Leonard household. We just grow our own food. Uh, you Good know, for you. We, lemon trees, mandarin orange trees, pomegranate trees, lime trees. So as we, we, we came up with a really good thing in the beginning and before the show, it's like, you know, when life gives you produce, make juice. <laughs> My wife's making kombucha now. And it's like, and kombucha is expensive. So it's like, yeah, it just run, rinse out the bottles and, you know, we'll make our own. Good for her. That's awesome. Yeah. She's really bored. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> question yeah. yeah from Stephen blair i currently have a blanket booth i'm sure it's keeping you nice and warm yeah, almost do done that. building a four by six booth using daw box plans double walled 
When I get to the point where I need to do treatment on the inside of the booth, how should I best attack that? Well, there's no standard way to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, George, you're really the expert on small booth acoustics. I mean, I've seen you present a paper at the National Association of Broadcasters. So I don't have any proof that I did that, but I I do know I was there and you were there. I I saw you. I heard the whole thing. I've Googled my name and NAB about a million different ways. I've never found anything online to prove that I was there. But yes, I got just to have do to that trust once. Me on that. Yeah. I fooled enough people to get to, to speak there. But um, yeah, it does depend on the size of the room. Are you sitting or standing? How much bass trapping will you need based and what kind of mic are you using? If you tune your space really, really well, then you can use almost any mic. If you're tuned not so great, using a shotgun mic or other mics that are more directional are going to let you cheat a little bit um, and get away with some less than ideal acoustics. So also mic placement, as we've talked about tonight, being closer to the mic lets you also deal with less than ideal acoustics. It will kind of focus the lens on your, on your, on your face, so to speak, and kind of reject more of the background. So, um, but um, you know, the, the doll box plans, if you're a good carpenter, it's a good basis for building something, but you, you need to be a pretty good carpenter to build a good box from doll box plants. I yeah. mean, it's a guideline, but it's, there's a lot to it. Um, I would not use two inch layer of foam on the walls. Like is usually suggested. That's not going to get you a really satisfactory result. Just that just doesn't seem to cut it for really almost anybody. Yeah. We've, and we've talked about this and that is, you know, some people, you know, they they'll they don't know the equations involved in creating the right acoustical environment, especially in a small box. And the fact is, is you don't. Uh, you don't yeah. have to know that stuff. You know, there are places. You know, I I know that that Oralex has this thing where it's like, we'll give us the dimensions and we'll give you exactly how to do it. You know, I'm not so sure. I'm convinced they know how to do it yet. Yeah, well, I have to do. I should, I should do it like once a year. Get one of those things done and see yeah. how they've evolved their treatment recommendations. Yeah. The, th- the thing is, is you got to use your ears and the, yeah. it, it helps to know what you're listening for. And then once you do that, you know, George and I have our services where if you send us a raw sample of your audio, uh, we will give it a listen and we'll be able to tell. I mean, we can generally tell the shape of the room, how big it is, you know, if you're too close to the mic, where the, just, where the glasses, where yeah, the, all the those sorts are. of things. Yeah, we can hear those things and, and we can tell you. You know, and at, are you under a shelf? How many times have you asked that one, George? Are you under a <laughs> shelf? You know, exactly. is it a wire shelf or is it a wood shelf or something like that? Because that makes right. a that makes a huge difference. And uh, those are the questions we ask, and and we do ask questions. When once we hear it, it's like, why is this? Although generally we know the answer before it gets answered uh, by by the client. But uh, I've got my specimen collection cup over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. And George over at George the dot tech. Is that right? You got it, man. You nailed it. All right. Um, you know, go over to our websites, check them out. Uh, and you, you'll see, you know, you go to the scroll to the bottom of my homepage. You'll find this specimen collection cup. We're in the process of reorganizing that and changing it. You know, you got to keep your, your website up to date. Uh, and, um, you know, we'll listen and we'll give it a full analysis. I mean, I've, we have a process. We have a thought process as to how we listen to it. And we talked about it, you know, acoustics, mic technique, setting levels, and just looking at waveforms, listening to them, we can tell what's going on. Of course, the spectrograph helps a whole lot because that tells us more than, you know, you might not, you might normally uh, not hear. Mm-hmm. Anyway. I think we're going to take another break right now, listen to uh, some of our sponsors. And then if you've got a question or if you'd like to be on the show right now, I know there's a lot of you watching this thing live. Just type in, uh, you know, write to the guys at VOBS.TV. Get that trailer, get that little thing in there. Right there it is. Uh, Write to us and say, I want to be on the show right now. And we will send you the link, and you can come join us here on uh, on StreamYard, I'm which is what the we're inbox. Using. All right, and uh, we'll be right back after these important messages. Do not go away; still lots to come. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the Voiceover Body Shop. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business. 
there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. It That's me on camera. You know what that means. Source Elements. We get to thank them for their support of our show. And shout out to the tools and, and the, the development of technology that has made voiceover production much more efficient remotely. Um, they, they've really stepped it up, and especially in ways that are maybe not so obvious this year, which is really building up their support and their education side of things. Um, they've started a certification program, um, which they've had in the past, but they, they started it up again. And you can get certified now uh, as a Source Connect user. What that essentially means is you'll, you'll, you'll go through, uh, you'll, you'll do a one-on-one -on -one with someone at Source Elements, and they'll listen to you. They'll they'll test out your knowledge of your setup. They'll make sure that you've actually configured your equipment correctly, and they'll give you feedback on how you're sounding and are you set up correctly to use Source Connect and et cetera, et cetera. And it's a service that they're providing now. I, I believe it's seventy five dollars, something like that. And you can get that through through the website. Is it going to win you gigs? I can't say that for sure, but. Um, you will feel a little more confident that what you're doing is correct and you have everything set up more correctly and you get a little badge on your account saying that you've been certified. So that might just give some confidence to those who are connecting with you on Source Connect that you're going to deliver uh, what they need you to deliver on time. Um, so anyway, we appreciate Source Elements. They've been with us for a long time now and uh, they're continuing to improve and, and innovate tools that make remote production a lot easier. So anyway, we thank them so much. And let's get back to more audience participation, shall we? Right after this. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. And we're back. And again, Come on, guys, let's join us here on, on the show. It's there's, there's not much to it if you want to show off your studio. I mean, I love showing off my studio. So I'm going to do that right now. Excellent. You know, I mean, I mean it's, it is it is what it is, but I can take the camera here and show you what goes on in here. You can see my humongous collection of antique radios, which all work. Well, most Can't wait till we can safely be in the studio again. I we know. Everybody hanging out in here with us. Yeah, I mean, so you can you can see all those, and my my famous couch, which is where <laughs> I end up napping an awful lot, and you know my my nineteen forty two uh, Zenith uh, console radio here, which just plays off my iPad, which is kind of cool, and <laughs> and my my booth over here, which uh, if I can get over here, there's too many chairs in here. We got to get rid of some of the chairs. <laughs> this is uh, this is my booth here. You know, it used to be a, a, a drum isolation booth mm -hmm. and we've converted it into strictly a voiceover booth with the Terra Strong Memorial chair, even though Terra is still. Oh, <laughs> <It's... laughs> I love that you're getting to use that chair now. That chair is blessed, man. I damn well better be. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but, you know, it's, uh, no, I'm I'm honored that you let me have that. Now, now the wife is getting me a new chair for here. I'm getting an X chair, and they mm -hmm. ain't cheap, but you know it has a headrest. It you know my my butt supports your spine, right? Yeah, so I'll sit up straight. You know, yeah, you know, and it, it'll work better with the uh, you know with the the auto table thing where I can just press a button and you know you know we haven't heard from from Eddie Furrier for a long time who gave us this, oh, good this desk. Yeah. But, uh, I was just looking at a picture of Ann Ganguza's studio. She has the exact same one. 
I'm like, that's the Costco desk. I know that desk. Yeah, it's a great desk. You know, Jim, and it made a huge difference in here. Jim Edgar in the uh, YouTube chat said, that is an epic nap couch. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Yeah. I and think you may have bumped the middle slider on your camera, the and it and it got darker. Oh, the the, yeah, the middle you. little lever, pull it. Uh, is it you mean yeah. like that? Yeah, there we go. Okay, good, Looking good. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, the, the thing is, is you know, with because I can play anything through the radios here. You know, I'm usually listening to Radio Paradise. Check it out. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, it's just a great napping place. And now that I'm, I'll be turning 65 a little later this week. I'm entitled to naps. So, Everybody should take naps. It's well, not that, just for boomers. Yeah, well, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. You're not considered a boomer there, my friend. You're really? I, am by, I am by my daughter. <laughs> She's 12. <laughs> I've been accused of being a boomer. Uh, All righty. <laughs> we, we have somebody else who joins us. Uh, you know, we know we see him in there a lot and ask questions, and that's Stephen Blair. Stephen, welcome to the show. Hi, guys. Well, thank you, and uh, happy holidays to you. Can you hear me? We certainly Sounds can. Great. All right, yeah. excellent. Nice headphones. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I really appreciate what you guys do every week, and uh, and I uh, watched your uh, broadcast a couple of weeks ago on the WOVO, and congratulations, Dan. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I'm certainly uh, going to be joining. I'm, I have a, I, I'm not a pro yet. I'm working on that, but, uh, you know. Pro at heart, let's put it that yeah. way. Have you booked so, any work? Not yet. So okay. I've, I've booked some work over the years. I've been doing this for a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. So I've booked a video game and a couple of commercials and things like that, but not stead not steadily. So right. I, I just got uh, a couple of demos made. Chuck Duran made those. So mm -hmm. that should uh, help. Yeah. So for sure. uh, we're working on it and, and get, uh, hopefully getting there. I had the question on the DAW box. I was the one that had the question on the DAW mm -hmm. box. Yeah. I am a pretty good carpenter, and I've got every, I've got all the, all the walls except for the door wall. It's mm -hmm. a four by six, and they only had a single layer of MDF. So what I did was I put took MDF, I made a sandwich, MDF, uh, and then I put put two inches of the solid uh, Owens Corning foam, mm -hmm. and then another layer of MDF on a half inch mm -hmm. MDF. Mm -hmm. So that's basically the the my walls and then outside on the outside of the walls i did use the indoor outdoor carpet on the outside of the mm -hmm. walls you made a, a composite wall yes yeah. yeah exactly yeah so uh so on the interior uh are you do you suggest that i just experiment with different kinds of foam or uh, other treatments or blankets or anything like that and see what works when you're building something so customized with all this work you're putting into it use it Use nice stuff that looks nice and that you like to be around. Foam, foam. I mean, there's some nice looking foam, but I don't think it holds up for the long, long haul. Okay. Um, you get you, especially in a really cramped space. You're bumping into it. You're rubbing it. it starts to kind of disintegrate, fall apart over the years. Um, and you need pretty thick foam. The the two inch foam that's really commonly sold in voiceover booths and stuff doesn't cut it because it can't really control much below a thousand hertz. Okay. I remember a lot of the vocal range in, in a male voice especially is between a hundred and a thousand or even lower, right? So foam, unless it's four inches thick or even more, it doesn't really do much to control that. So um that's why we like the stuff made with rock wool. Um okay. that's my favorite is rock wool. Now you can get okay. that stuff at Lowe's and Home Depot. Rock okay. wool. They sell a fireboard and what is it, acoustic fireboard, AFB or Right, safe and sound is that uh, uh, quiet rock? Quiet rock. There's also quiet rock. That's and, the and that's the dry safe and sound wall. is the the white fiberglass insulation. Sa safe and sound is the yeah that grayish foam, uh, not foamy. It's uh it's made out of spun spun mineral minerals. It right. looks like fiberglass, but it's not made of the same stuff. It's made it, out of it. Itches just as bad. It still has yeah. It still <laughs> can still itch. Um, yeah. So that's that's we find that. Pound for pound, foot for foot, you get much better performance out of it. So yeah, and, and that's and a better result. That's yeah, quiet and rock. It, mm -hmm. Yeah, and as no, you're building, quiet, the, no, yeah. the quiet rock is the drywall. Okay, um, this is stuff called this stuff's called um, rock wool. Rock wool, um, okay. and they have rock board, mm -hmm. and they have safe and sound. That's the stuff that you're going to find at like a a Home Depot, probably is safe and sound. 
Okay. What kind of a door are you putting on that booth? Uh, a solid core door. Mm -hmm. you know? That's going to be your weakest point because unless yeah. you made your door the same way you made the walls, obviously it's not going to have the same right. uh, level of isolation. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, in most cases you're going to be okay. If you have a lot of outside traffic, you may find yourself someday beefing up your door and actually building a composite door. Oh, which okay. Which people do do. They actually sandwich more than one material on the door to get that same isolation. Yeah. Yeah, I was what? thinking of maybe doing that anyway to see if I could, you know, maybe yeah. make it more more sound. sound yeah. One one of the one of the keys to getting the soundproofing right is to go in there where it's where it's completely dark and closing the door. If you see any light leaks, that's a sound leak. And you've got to seal that up with caulk or tighten the uh, the actual panel so everything is tight. If you can if you can seal that up, especially with the door, and the door is, is probably the most critical part uh, of building a booth because one, yeah, you know, a solid core door, a heavy door, and the right seals around the uh, the frame. And so mm -hmm. when you close it and it compresses it, you know. You know, you you are in a, you are in a chamber that is not going to move any air in or out unless you build a ventilation system into it. And uh, you know, of course, my favorite ventilation system is still open the door, close the door, open right. the door, close the door. Yeah, works yeah. It's just pretty as well, honestly. <laughs> it is pretty effective. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. And and thank you also, uh, uh, George, for uh, for. Uh, setting me up with the with the source elements see you uh, i watched your video and i got uh, downloaded it and everything was oh, seamless good. when i did that so i appreciate that you guys are really a wealth of knowledge and i appreciate everything you do and happy holidays to you guys you are really top notch I well thank you it. thanks steven mm -hmm. greatly appreciate it so all righty well we got a few more questions and again if you want to be on the show uh and ask your question or give us unsolicited praise uh, we'll be happy to get that, George. I've got one that this 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 I just this came up today on Facebook. Okay, and related to building booths and having ISO booths, this came up, and I just thought it'd be a quick. I would read through it quickly. But it gets a little it gets a little numbery, but it's worth it, I think. Okay. Um, Serena Brooks says, "Okay, I'm finally ordering a studio bricks, and here's my question: Does anybody have the studio one in a finished attic bedroom?" and has not had it collapse under the floor below. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's not light, is it? <laughs> yeah, I'm attempting to find out if it can hold this 1,000-pound booth safely. Um, our finished basement ceiling is short, so we can't fit it in there. Um, what should I do? And a lot of people did chime in with some inf interesting info, but until this one came up, because I, I mentioned you might want to hire a, an acoustic, not acoustics engineer, but a structural, structural engineer, engineer yeah. right? Yeah. And Mitch Curtin Williams said, I can tell you from having a having hired a structural engineer for this very same issue that you'll you'll want to hire a structural engineer. He said, it's going to depend on the pound of the, the pounds per square feet and the size of the lumber used for your joists. So uh, as well as whether the joists are maxed out on span. In other words, how long the joist runs across your house. Um and all this kind of stuff. So a structural engineer can look at all this stuff and give you an idea of what is safe and what isn't safe. So the long and the short of it is, if your if your uh, floor joists are two by twelves and twelve inch on center, meaning they're only twelve inches apart, that's a very well built home. The floor is extremely strong. You're not going to have to worry about it. If it's anything less than that, meaning the joists are further away from each other width wise, or they're not very thick or they're extremely long or a combination of all those, it is more of a concern. So you might spend four to $500 on getting a structural engineer to do a report. Um, it's, a, it's a bit of a cost, but it will take away that, that anxiety that I'm sure you're experiencing thinking about putting so much weight up there. It's like putting a water bed in your attic. A water bed, yeah. I mean, I used to say, like, imagine having a party. Could you have eight people standing around and talking and not have to worry about them falling full floor? Hopefully. Oh, but in oh, an attic. Oh, I could tell you a story. Oh, when, yeah. When I, when, I, when I was in college, back when dinosaurs were. Don't roamed, tell me it was a balcony. It wasn't a balcony, okay. but it was. We <laughs> had a fraternity story. house, and on the second floor of this house, they were doing that shout dance, and we were sitting, you know, in the dining room downstairs. 
and the floor started going like this. Ooh, make me want to <laughs> shout. Da, 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 shout. Shout. From yeah, Animal it House. Was, it was, well, that's when Animal House was a fairly new film. Uh, give you an idea how long ago it was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, you got to make sure that, that you know, that the, the attic will support it. Having done yeah. some work on roofs in this house uh, for a couple of times over the last few years and what it takes to get it structurally sound. Yeah, I mean, you've got to have a heavy joist in there and stuff like that. And the yeah. heaviest part of that booth is the door. That thing weighs a ton. That's you right. have to have an honor guard take that from the crate to the to the booth. It um, is hefty. Yeah, and but it's good, works. but that's what makes it soundproof. It's a good heavy door with an amazing seal. Absolutely. Yeah. All righty. Spots we got, or, or more questions? No, we're, we're out of spots for now. Let's get some more questions awesome. in here because this is what makes it happen. Um, let's see. Uh, David? Let's see here. Uh, oh, yeah. David Byrne asks, Merry Christmas, guys. Merry Christmas. I'm not a pro yet, yet love the show. Hey, is there the third-party apps plugins catching up with the M1 chip uh, isotope, like Isotope 9 and UAD plugins? Are the plugins catching up to M1? Slowly. Yeah, uh, why, and why year, are you using them? Yeah, I think next year um, they'll be up to speed. I think the reason it takes so long is plugins, I guess, I'm not a software engineer. I don't know what I'm talking about, really. But I think they're complicated to write to write them well, and they probably are very tied into the, to the processor that they're working on. You know, they have to have a very, very, very efficient way of communicating with the processor. If they don't, then they add a lot more latency, right? And right. they don't work well. So for that reason, it's probably harder to rewrite the code from scratch to run on these new chips. Thankfully, Max, a thing called Rosetta, which translates the two languages, is extremely efficient and works fantastic. So the very first time you launch an app on your Mac that is not in, compiled for Silicon Mac, um, it says, hey, you need to install Rosetta. You do it once, and that's it. Now Rosetta is on your machine. When you launch something that has, uh, is an Intel written program like, like uh, Isotope still is, um, and a bunch of others, it will automatically, when you launch it, transcode it or translate it to this other compiled language. I'm, I'm talking like an idiot because I don't really. I'm not a software engineer. We, we know it works, <laughs> but we know it works, and it works seamlessly. It really. It you just never even think about it ever again. Um, you just launch your DAW, whether it's Audition or Twisted Wave or whatever, in Rosetta mode, and uh, you're off to the races, and you never have to really worry about it. So I wouldn't be too concerned uh, whether they're caught up or not, yet or not. Um, we've been using them all year with uh, nary an issue. I haven't really, it, as long as they're in Rosetta mode, everything seems to be um, hunky-dory. Cool. All right. Uh, Jay Horace Black had a follow-up question. Says, How do you feel about the added ports on the 14 and 15, 6, uh, and 14 and 16 inch M1 MacBook Pros? Hopefully this means the next series of laptops come with more ports. Don't well, count on Yeah, it. the Pros will come with yeah, more ports, but, but that's a lot of money to spend just to add a few yeah. more ports. I mean, I, mean, I know, I, I, it is annoying that it only has two USB ports on the air. I, right. I do, I wish I had a dedicated charging port. They're going to redesign the MacBook Airs next year, and I, I, I would be, I would be shocked if they didn't add the, the MagSafe connector back on. Yeah. But to me, it's just like I looked at it. I was very excited. I watched the new keynote when it came out. I was, I literally had it in my shopping cart. I was real close to buying it. And I thought about it, I was like, it's so much more money. It's a bigger, thicker computer just to add a few ports that I, I have. I still have to use a hub. Even if I got that computer, there's no USB-A ports on there, the ones that most of our accessories use. There's only USB-C. So you'd still need a hub for certain things. And I was like, I don't know, just to me, not really worth it, yeah. uh, the, the added cost. Well, so, well, you told me to get the uh, the 10 port <laughs> thing that plugs into the USB. How many of them are you using? At least uh, have let's them? see here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. We're using uh, five. Yeah, about half of them. So yeah, yeah. That sounds about so right. I have room to expand, <laughs> and you will. I mean, I'm still using. I'm. I've got. I'm USB everything. I got USB keyboard. I'm even plugging in my my um, touchpad with USB 
I can't quite get in the shot, but it, you see it's plugged in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I leave it plugged in all the time because I like it to always work. Well, I it hate is. it when it doesn't. When the battery goes dead. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, the battery know. on my Magic Mouse tends to last at least a month. You know. Yeah, they do last a long time, but yeah. when it goes dead at the most inconvenient time, oh, well, it's a drag. Which is you know. why I keep. A wired mouse plugged in at all times. I used to do the same thing. I had a wired mouse at the ready all the time. Yeah. So before you know it, you're using a lot of ports. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, um, if you do get something, you're going to need a hub. I would recommend if you're really going, if you want something really heavy duty that can run everything, look at the OWC stuff, Other World Computing brand. They've been one of the most trusted peripheral provider manufacturers you know for mac stuff for a really really long time i have an owc thunderbolt 3 hub that has a whole bunch of stuff plugged into it and uh it's been it's been reliable i had a usb hub that was not reliable i had to get rid of that it was it was giving it was giving me kittens um <laughs> that you know that can really be frustrating so be careful what you buy uh when you're buying hubs Absolutely. Yeah. Well, this one works great. It was seamless, you know, and then, and it run ABC, you know, mm -hmm. any, any USB that, you know, that you want on there, which is mm -hmm. really, really kind of nice. Mm -hmm. Uh, Patricia Andrea, who is living out in the wilds of Idaho, I think, uh, wherever Lovely. she is. She says, I have a little question. I have some custom made sound panels from a musician that was moving and sold me all 12 for a great price. Mm -hmm. Can't beat that. Would like to change the color of the fabrics. He used rock wool inside the wood frames. Would you recommend any specific outer fabric? Breathable fabric. Yeah. You know. Not can canvas. <laughs> yeah. Something that's going to, uh, you know, let sound through. Yeah. Be, it should be breathable. You should be able to see light through it. Like if you hold up the fabric and you can see light through quite easily, that's going to be good acoustic fabric too. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And you don't even have to take what's on there off. You could just leave leave them wrapped and wrap just wrap right over yeah that's fine too don't go yeah. through the mess of taking it off plus if you take it off you're now exposing yourself to whatever well Within rock there. wool or whatever is in there and so if you leave what's on there on there everything stays sealed up inside you don't have to worry about it so i would definitely leave what's there there yeah i mean unless of course they're yeah, I mean, I guess they must be plaid or something, and that just doesn't work in her studio. Yeah, or a weird and... color, or have stains or something. <laughs> I mean, I I don't blame you if you want to take it off. You just you're just inviting yourself. You're just giving yourself a lot more work, a exactly. lot more work to to re refabric them or reupholster them. Just wrap right over the old stuff. Jim says Guilford of Maine stuff. Guilford of Maine is a manufacturer of fabrics. Um, they're really nice. They're about fifteen something dollars a yard. So they're, they're quite expensive, um, but they look really, really nice. Yeah. Um, I, you know, it's always yeah. fun going into Joanne Fabrics and trying to find the right fabric. Well, you know, for a radio, I'm trying to find replacement speaker covers and stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah. You know, and it's like, oh, here we go. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Anyhow, a uh, question from Phyllis Fort. Uh, what mic might you suggest for her blanket booth with no roof? I still manage an average of minus 60 to minus 67 dB. Well, that remains mm. to be seen. I mean, it might be that low, but you know, we don't see how big the waveform is and, you know, and how well you're modulating or I what mean, mic you're currently using and what mic are you currently using? I mean, yeah, and uh, you can use almost any mic in a blanket booth, uh, with no roof, as long as your room is still quiet that you're in, um, you know, you should be okay. As long as it's tall enough, it should be, the walls should be at least a foot over your head. Like if you can peer over the side, it's not tall enough. Um, so it's got to be up higher than you, at least a foot. Um, but, um, you know, I, I tend to really kind of hammer on the whole shotgun mic thing for home studios because they just seem to help in a lot of cases, focus the mic pickup and reject more background noise. Um, but um, honestly, almost any good condenser hundred dollar plus quality condenser microphone it's going to sound pretty good um I'm, I'm not that happy about the 2020 the the base model audio technica i know that's a, a lot of people think that's kind, a good beginner mic it's a little hissy. noisy yeah it's a little noisy yeah because it's a smaller diaphragm it's a it's a lower end capsule but just a little more fifty dollars more the at 2035 35 yeah it's an amazing 
value and they've been making them a long time this is the 30 for 35 dan you still have one of these I'm probably sitting right over somewhere. here somewhere yeah. and it's still a great mic they just renamed it from the 30 25 to the 30 35 to the 20 35 yeah. but it's still a fantastic well, the, sounding mic yeah well the capsule in the 35 is is a much better capsule than what's in the 2020 the 2020 is almost like a you know a, a old radio shack uh electret condenser mic it's yeah, actually a small diaphragm in there. Yeah, so. it's pretty small. It looks it looks physically like this, but if you shine a light and look in the grill, mm -hmm. there's a little tiny little diaphragm in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah. yeah, but you know, if if you've got if you're in a quiet room, and this is the best part of all this is if you have a quiet quiet room that you can seal off, uh, and you don't have lots of traffic noise or people running around the house or whatever. You can build a blanket booth and they work fabulous. Uh, I have found that outbuildings, like if you have a tough shed or something like that, if you can abscond with that, uh, you can build a blanket booth in that and you're going to sound as good as any studio anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, except when a, you know, a, a, an LA police helicopter goes over or some of the military stuff we've been having flying over here lately. But yeah, yeah. You no know, kidding. like an Osprey goes by, you know it. Oh, those things are super loud. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I want an Osprey uh, uh, proof booth, please. Oh, that'll be a million dollars. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, there's another one that just slipped in there. Should we grab yeah. that one before? Yeah, yeah from TJ Mezzacapo VoiceOver. Hey, George and Dan, first time catching this live. All right. Hey, right on. Quick question. What are your thoughts on vocal booth to go? Well, there, there's a lot to that. I mean, they make a they lot make of a different stuff. Huge range of stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they make the, you know, their travel booth, which is, which is pretty good. It folds down and, you Movo. know, uh, yeah, the, yeah, there's the, uh, you know, the shower curtain, uh, booths that they make, which the are kind hangs of nice. from the ceiling. Yeah. Hangs with the, you know, just put a shower curtain hanger up there and you have it. Circ See, I've always believed that a circular booth is probably the best booth with a blanket. Yeah. Right. And they make different size booths, uh, with different size frames and stuff like that. I know for a fact that the, the blankets they make are fabulous for preventing reflection. Yeah, uh, they, they, really, they absorb sound nicely. They're not soundproof, but they do right. absorb. They do have some very, very heavy ones that have more of a soundproofing property. Yeah, uh, They help, but they're if you get into those really higher, high cost ones, the ones that have more isolation, you're getting, the pricing gets out there quickly. And I think for what you might spend, you might, be better off building something or finding a used, you know, whisper room or something else and get, yeah. you'll get better results, I think. But yeah, yeah creative, I, I, you know, I give them props for, you know, iterating and improving and coming up with new ideas. You know, honestly, the, the design inspired in some ways the tri-booth because we wanted something when Rick Wasserman and I came up with tri-booth, we wanted something that could just fold down and be more, just way more travel friendly that you could still stand inside of. Right. So, you know, it's just, we made it a triangle shape because it was just more efficient. Like you could fit it into a smaller bag, you know, and it was, it just made sense. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong. I don't think there's anything wrong with any of the booth products that, uh, they're making over there. They're, they're, their stuff's good and good yeah. service. Yeah, and, you know, and their stuff is re is really sort of oriented towards voiceover as opposed to uh, musicians right. and stuff like that. I mean, they can yeah. they can use it. And musicians really do need the soundproofing. I mean, so do voice actors, but because of the different size booths they have and stuff, it's it's actually pretty good stuff. Uh, you know, and and of course, you know, Harlan Hogan has all of his stuff. Uh, you know, the the Porta Booth Pro, you want Porta really Plus. Portable. Yeah, yeah the Porta really Booth super Plus. Duper portable. Yeah, that's my favorite ultimate compact portable product that actually works yeah that sounds good it's not super bulky you can still put it in a, a suitcase or carry it with you it's not that heavy yeah it'll fit in the in the uh the, the it will of the fit plane. In, yeah it will fit in the overhead storage compartment there's not a lot of portable things that do fit in the sto overhead storage right. so and and light enough that you can pull it out of there and defend yourself from anybody who gets unruly on a flight Jeez. You know, oh <laughs> I'm flying on Wednesday. Don't remind me. <laughs> just hide in the corner. And don't I'm just going to bring my red thong and I'll be good to go. <laughs> okay. <just. laughs> you see that guy? What? No, I missed that, that one. Jackass. <laughs> this guy wore a red thong on the plane as oh, a mask, that's as a what, statement yes. piece. 
Mm. <sighs> yeah. Alrighty. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, there's somebody who I would love to have you say hello, have us say hello to you. And that's our technical director, Sue Merlino, who is here every week and she puts up with us and she gets it done. So put yourself on here and at least say hi so everybody can see. And she's funny. Yeah, she's a really funny gal. Say it's something good, funny, I Sue. I unmute myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have my funny Santa hat, which... Um, oh, do yeah. something funny. There you go. There you I go. That, that works. <laughs> if I was still doing uh, stand-up, I'd tell everybody where to come watch me, but that's oh. not happening. But... Now, you're too busy producing podcasts. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do have a lot of podcasts. The one that I'm on that's kind of funny is the World Famous Shit Show with my partner, Josh, and I also do one called Menopod for... <laughs> women of a certain age um, uh-huh. and it's the name i mean we just kind of do it because it's a great name but yeah <laughs> and you're probably helping people yeah yeah we try we try we um is it a call-in show or do you guys just run with topics we do a, some live ones like on facebook with our we have a midlife mood swing facebook group of a thousand women um so we interact with um those women and have them sending questions and stuff like that but yeah it's a lot of fun Fabulous. But yeah. I love working with you guys. I, I've been doing this now yeah. for, what's it going to be? Three, th- four, three or four years. Four years. At least, goodness. I think four, yeah. Wow. So I look forward to my Monday, every other Monday nights, working with you guys. And you, I've learned so much about voiceover, <laughs> even though I don't do anything. But. Hopefully we've made it easier on you with our new system. The old one was mindless. <laughs> mind-numbingly yeah, frustrating was, at times. It was fun use. learning new things, though. I do appreciate that. Yeah. And, um, it, hel- it helps you appreciate where you, you need to start with something hard and then move to something easier to really appreciate exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> well, StreamYard was a blessing, I guess, um, mm. to be able to do remote when we can and um, when we need to. Yeah. But, uh, a little bit longer, maybe a few more months, I guess, huh? We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. But, I mean, but, it was fascinating when, of course, when, when the pandemic hit and we couldn't do the show together that we still were able to carry on from wherever we were and just do the show. StreamYard really helped out and helped us doing that. Of course, for a while we were doing it and trying to figure out the talkback system that George figured out so you could talk to us on Zoom while we were right. on StreamYard. Not really necessary anymore. Yeah, it became a you little just had more hand cues. Well, and, three, and I kept... Two. Saying things in the background that would make you laugh inappropriately. <laughs> That's true. I, I like think that. maybe <laughs> you guys I, wanted that to stop too. Missed but... the back channel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, and there's Josh. <laughs> Say hi, Josh. Love the show. Thank you. We and we appreciate having you. Uh, anyway, thanks for everything you've been doing. This is you know uh, we couldn't do welcome. this show without you because we've tried it and George and it I fight over the bad. switcher. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, I yeah. know my son Matt Hat likes to help out as well. Oh, absolutely, too, so. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We appreciate but, the team. Yeah, but you know, and then we end up fighting over this stuff and this stuff and this stuff and this stuff and that stuff. And <laughs> I still like to slice down the middle. Yeah, the, you, oh, you, you, you mean you, th- this one where we're yeah. all like, like that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so give you an idea of how easy it is to do things now with this show. So it just relies on us being funny and being informative, which I really appreciate. And hopefully being accurate from time to time. Yeah. I, we, we, we try to be anyway. So thanks for, yeah, thanks for doing this with us. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Happy man. holidays. Thanks. All righty. And Merry Christmas and all that stuff. Uh, let's see. Do we have any more questions? Not that I really I see. We run through the queue. No, I don't see any more questions. I think we can, uh, but put a pin know, in this one. Um, amazingly, that we were able to carry off a show for this long. But you know, we do have a lot of people to thank. Uh, now, next week on this show, uh, I we're not going to do tech talk. I mean, we've been doing tech talk for the last hour and a half here. So exactly, we'll just, we'll, we'll just call this tech talk number seventy. How does that yeah, sound? Yeah, that sounds good to me. Okay, we'll just Let's run Tech Talks that. number 70 for the next two weeks because we need to take some time off and yeah. spend time with our families, uh, especially on Monday nights when I'm like, when are you going to be done? Can I make dinner now? <laughs> you know, I mean, we're doing a TV show here for crying out loud. This is important. <laughs> Marcy's, Marcy and your family have been really patient. We They let us take over the house, take over a your, the whole guest house, the whole thing we've taken over yeah, a really. lot. So we appreciate it. For you guys 10 and, and a family. half years. It's going to be 11 years in March. 
right? You know. No, isn't it going to be 12 years in March? No, 11. Okay. We, we started in 2011. It's 2021. Gotcha. gotcha. So therefore, 2022 will be 11 years. And there's no end in sight because you guys keep asking questions because that's why we're here. Anyway, we need to thank our donors of the week. And it's a long list because it's, you know, everybody that's that's been in there. Why don't we just uh, take them in <laughs> you know, one at a time? Yeah, go for it. Uh, Patricia A. Toussaint. I hope I'm saying that right. I might, I'll bet you Toussaintate. But Toussaintate? I'm sure yeah. she'll write to us and say, no, not even close. Please do. Uh, yeah, Rob Rader. Writer. Patty Gibbons, <laughs> <laughs> Greg Thomas, uh, Shauna, Shauna, <laughs> Pennington Bad, uh, Yes I Con Productions. That's a, the lovely Martha Con, Don Griffith, Stephen Chandler, Sandra Manweller, who had a question tonight. Robert Leadham, mm -hmm. Antland Productions. Uncle Roy, Uncle Roy, Graham Spicer up there in the Great White North area. Eh? Hey, Dick Goldfoser, yeah. uh, Philip Sapir, Tom Pinto. One, hey, of the, one of the high, you know, the high end guys who were watching the show, Shelly Avellino, Christopher, one of the high -end girls, a uh, very high end, you know, with that red hair, Posh. yes, Christopher Epperson, uh, Sarah Borges, the amazing Michelle Blanker, and Christy Burns. Thank you, guys. You know, you can if 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 you like what we do, if we do it for you, if we answer your questions, if we have given you the information that is going to make your voiceover life better, you know, you, you can help support the show. Face. Right. If, if you smile like Ren and Stimpy right. watching or, our show. Yes, or, or like, you know, Doc Leonard here. Um, <laughs> if, uh, if you really appreciate it, we appreciate your support. You can go to our our website, which is vobs.tv and i know a bunch of you are probably watching there there is a uh there is an actual thing there it says donate please donate please it's donate you can you can you know it goes right through paypal and uh, it helps maintain the high level of technical sophistication that you have come to love here on this show and it keeps you coming back every two weeks exactly that's what uh, it does <laughs> uh you know and, and all you have to do is watch the first year of EWAPS to get an idea what every week is. Uh, it's Apollo first 13 like. <laughs> yeah, really. Until we got here in L.A. and uh, you know, It was, I mean, we were doing it on 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 Skype and then it was, Zoom. It was all glued together with all oh, the different tools. God, it was terrible. But, you know, thanks to your fun. help and your support, we've actually fun. made this a viable television show. And, of course, a viable <laughs> podcast uh also join our mailing list i know a lot of you got noticed that hey you can be on the show because you're on our mailing list and you saw that hey i can be on the show or who our guest is going to be this week uh, mm -hmm. that sort of thing and all you have to do is click on that and uh, we're almost to 900 people on the mailing list so we would uh love to get it up there so if you haven't yet do it now because it has to we have to reach 900 it's you know it's something that has to be done we by the end of numbers. 2021 uh, let's see. George the dot tech now blogging again. Tell us about it. Yeah. I've started putting my Facebook answers cause I'm, you know, as Dan is too on in a lot of Facebook groups and I've started putting my answers there. So if you go over to, uh, via, uh, man, my own website is <laughs> George the dot tech. tech. <laughs> and, uh, in, in the, uh, resources there, the free stuff, you'll see the blog it's slash Eldo blog. Why Eldo blog, you're wondering, because that's the original name of my company, <laughs> Eldorado Recording Services, way back in the day. Um, and you'll see a bunch of content on there. I fill it in when I have time and when I find something worth commenting on. And uh, hopefully you'll learn, learn a little something and it'll create this repository of knowledge uh, that you can check in on whenever you, whenever you like. So yeah. the blog yeah. is alive again. Yeah. You'll notice that George and I have not written a book. That's nor, right. Nor do we ever intend to. But if uh, I do, it might have a cover, something like that. <laughs> uh, books, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know I've, many people have mentioned books. It's, I think it's a little bit of a vanity thing. I don't know. Yes, it can be. There are certain concepts that are evergreen, you know, mic technique and, you know, sound, you know, acoustics of sound and things like that. But there's so much stuff that is evolving and a book can be outdated kind of quickly. You can't hear a book. Mine might you're... just be like 
pictures might each page might just be a QR code. <laughs> just open the book and scan this QR. Next page, another QR code. I don't know if people would like that. Now, somehow it just doesn't doesn't have the marketability, I know. Although I'm sure there's someone who would find that fascinating. <laughs> Somebody. Yeah. You know, but we've got all the webinars. If you go over to VoiceOver Extra, we've got webinars there. George, you know, you're starting to produce your own webinars. I might do a few new ones this year, you know, maybe a little bit more video. Haven't done a whole lot in the last, you know, I, I have other responsibilities now as president of WOVO. Yes. Yeah, I don't have more on time. your plate. So. Oh, yeah, well, anyway, I, I won't playing. get to be there for your birthday, man. So I'm going to wish you now. Happy birthday. Why? Well, thank you. Pennsylvania. So I'm going to miss it. Well, but, um, we'll, well see you, you next year. You'll, you'll be here in spirit and you, mm -hmm. and you, and you miss all the fresh fruit. If people are going to come to this, we're going to have, hopefully have a party and people can just pick fruit off the trees and throw them in their drinks or whatever. LA style. I love it. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to work with me, by the way, uh, and you, uh, you need help with your home voiceover studio, clearly if you've been watching for the last hour and a half, you know that we may actually know what we're talking about uh, when it comes to home voiceover studios. And that's the name of my website, homevoiceoverstudio.com. Uh, you know, I have my specimen collection cup. If you just scroll all the way to the bottom of the homepage for now, it's going to be higher up later on, uh, for $25, I will analyze your raw audio, uh, and hear what you're, what's going on in your booth. Uh, where are you recording? Is it too noisy? Is it too dead? Is it too lively? Is it too muffled? Is it, does it sound, does it have the ring of truth? <laughs> uh, and, uh, I will, I will not hold back and I will tell you exactly, you know, what needs to be done there unless the there's whistle a lot, test. a what? You got to give it the whistle test. The whistle test. What, what it's what's supposed, supposed to, sound to sound like. like. Exactly. So we'll, we'll do that. So you can find that stuff there. And George, you have the same thing over at your website. You just don't use the specimen collection cup. No, I wasn't that clever. I'm just, <laughs> my, my, my service is just called sound check and you can get that at George, the dot tech. And uh, same idea. I'll analyze your audio. If you did process the audio, let me know. Don't try to fool me. Don't process it and then say you didn't, because I'll know. Yeah, we know. Um, but if if you want me to also evaluate the processing that you're trying to do, I'll I will listen to it. And if the editing is funky, I'll even mention that. Like if your editing is funky, I'll call it out because uh, some people don't know they shouldn't be chopping out every single pause between every word so they sound like an android. Yes. I mean, we, we have AI voices to do that. That's right. Yeah. That's I, right. So. I think we need to do a show on AI voices and, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and do the whole thing as AI voice and sound like this. And, you know, if you I, want I, to hear a very long discussion about deep breathing, we just did a podcast recording for the pro audio suite podcast where we interviewed uh, Mary Lynn Wisner about that whole topic. And we covered it ad nauseum. We covered it very, very thoroughly. So, Did anybody you, breathe during it, though? Yeah, that's a good <laughs> point. Yeah, if you were to hear someone who really is coming from a point of authority on what gets casted and what you end up getting, hearing on commercial, it's her. So, Absolutely. Anyway, All right. happy holidays, Dan. And it's been a heck of a year. Merry Christmas and, and Happy New Year. And, of course, my greetings to your family back in Philadelphia or Thank where, you. wherever it is outside of Philadelphia that your West family Chester, is. Pennsylvania. West Chester, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh, say hello to all of them and give everybody a hug for me. And, uh, and, and you know, I wish I could give you all a hug, too, for joining us here in, uh, on VoiceOver Body Shop as uh, we finish out 2021 Virtual uh, hug. Yeah, virtual, virtual yeah, okay. hug. Um, but have a have yourself a really nice holiday season. Be safe. Wear your mask indoors. Uh, get vaccinated. You know, whatever you, you know. You don't want to like me because you don't want to be vaccinated. Fine. But get vaccinated. It works because I haven't gotten sick. And, you know, and neither of you. Well, you, you think you probably had it like in 2019 when you I think were, I was an early adopter. <laughs> <laughs> honestly <laughs> yeah so you're you so, aren't gonna get it anyway well we'll see yeah yeah uh we need do need to thank our amazing sponsors harlan hogan's voiceover essentials voiceover extra source elements voheroes.com voiceactorwebsites.com and jmc, JMC demos, 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 demos 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 is there an actor demo. there is uh jeff holman 
Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff, and congratulations on you getting your career going. That's that is really that's great news that you're twenty five years of, of of plugging away in Hollywood. Yeah, and and getting your break and and making the most of it. You know, when you get your break, even in voiceover, you gotta deliver, and clearly Jeff is doing that. Yeah, uh, of course, Sumerlino doing a fantastic job of switching this and and you know again putting up with us uh over an hour and a half here almost two hours uh two hours. Two, yeah it's uh amazing that you know we're able to get somebody that of that quality and and uh and dedication to what we do here yeah and, for uh, sure we really do appreciate it so uh you know our more virtual hugs out there uh and of course lee penny just for being lee penny i know he's hiding out there somewhere you know, you're like, who's Lee Penny? We'll just let you keep guessing. Anyway, that's going to do it for us for 2021. And thanks for joining us. And thanks for coming on the show. Our guest that uh, decided to be, you know, fearless and face the, mm-hmm. you know, face the, uh, the, uh, the home yeah. studio masters here. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you what, it's not an easy business. There's a lot to learn. 2022 is going to be just as challenging as 2021. This is an entrepreneurial business. It's not show business. Well, I hear it's show business, but it's, it's really is work and you have to be good at a lot of different things. And that's what we're here to teach you about is really what it takes to be a great voice actor and a successful professional voice actor. So with that in mind, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover. Body shop. Or VO. B.S. Hey, have a great year, everybody. And, you know, and if it sounds good. It is good. All righty. Take care. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. ho. ho, ho, ho. ho.